<laughs> so I, why do we have to talk about Jurassic Park 3? <laughs> why? Because it exists. Why? Now, can you believe that there are people actually like this in more than Lost World? To an why? extent. Why? It's shorter. Why? What? It's, it's shorter. It's a money cow. It's, it's a popcorn movie. It's very easily accessible. There's no heavy themes to it. It's it's easy to watch. It's, it's carte blanche. Let's get into Jurassic Park action and let's. Here's your way. dinosaurs. Here's your action. We're done. I remember. The end. I remember this movie being produced. I worked at Universal Studios when this movie was created. So I have a connection to it only because of that. But the reality is, of course. Stan Winston's last film, the Jurassic Park series, which I think the robotics for the raptors and the Spinosaurus, top-notch. His the effects side, were good. His the side of the story... The practical effects were good. The and, practical and, effects and were good. If we're talking good stuff about the mm. film first, um, the shots when you can watch a robot and a CG dinosaur on the screen at the same time, and they both basically are interacting with each other... Mm -hmm. The, what, when they did the mixture of the edits where this is practical, then we turn, and that's CG. And then we start with CG, turn to a robot or a puppet of whatever it may be. And you don't get that sense of, I've just changed. That, hmm. the film, succeeds. Especially in the raptor scenes. I now have, of course, analyzing them afterwards. Yeah, yeah. That, I respect that. And that is an area where that is what this franchise did well. Mm -hmm. And it succeeded there, and that is what I love about the mixture of practical effects as opposed to visual effects. And but, the, yeah. but the T-Rex, the T-Rex was the moneymaker. The T-Rex was badass. Why are you going to kill T-Rex, Devin? You, you killed T-Rex. There is a thing in, in stories of Hollywood that you do not do, and it broke a rule. And that is the T-Rex in part one, although it was the yeah. thing that you were scared of, became the hero. Mm -hmm. It became the hero at the end of the film. It did. In it, part two, awesome. in part two, it was the victim, and still became the hero. We talked about this: the Kill. parents, the parents trying to protect its child is all that it was. Immediately, you see the T Rex for the first time, and so like, yes, mm -hmm. killed it. It's going, boom! It the, the you now have a bigger villain with the boom movie. With the specific, boom. with the specific and sole purpose to. Elevate the Spinosaur. Exactly. Make this bigger, badder, better. And here's what they didn't do. Did you like the Spinosaur, though? It still is what it is, but it was there for that purpose, just the, the wow factor. The yeah. only reason. It was the only reason he was there. We have a bigger, badder -er dinosaur. Sounds familiar. Yeah, exactly. Like a most recent <laughs> Jurassic Park movie coming out. <laughs> now we have made up dinosaurs. Okay, next, another story. But anyway, the, the, the thing that Hollywood did wrong with the Spinosaurus was that it now became the villain dinosaur by killing the hero. And okay. you did not kill the dinosaur at the end of the film. It just walked away. They wanted to tell that line of, of giving you a villain, but they've already established that dinosaurs are not monsters. Mm -hmm. and it, it did would, live. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, every, everybody. It just walks away. All, all of them lived. The, the military showed yeah. up at the end, and uh, it pretty much buggered off. Very anticlimactic ending But for the me, problem but... is, they have, in, the, in the last two films, they have established these are, these are animals, and we need to leave them alone. That was the very end mm -hmm. message of The Lost World. If, if we can just let nature take its course and not interfere, they'll be all right. Yes. And so we've established that these are not monsters. These are animals that we cannot kill. If we kill them, how many kids in the theater would have been like, ah! I wouldn't have mind seeing maybe even a pack of T-Rexes come around the thing at the end and then just leave it open-ended. Mm -hmm. Like you see the pack of T-Rexes come, or like there's three or four of them that surround the, the cast. And then the, the actors leave and then you just leave and whatever you saw is up to your own mind. Because it yeah, would have would given the revenge of the yeah. hero. Yeah. And it didn't do that. It yeah. didn't touch that. I was. We also know that the, the story had major production problems with the rewrite, even within the beginning of production. Oh. And the whole story was written as the film was being made. And therefore, the original idea for the movie was the, uh, with the plane crashes, where there would be parents and kids going on a, on a, uh, a field trip, and the kids' plane crashed, and the parents' plane did not. And the parents had to go back and save hmm. the kids. Mm. Now, you can see the elements of that story stayed, but it was a last-minute decision where they already had props and sets built, and they had to go scrap the script. Mm -hmm. So you can see where it's a little loose. Why the heck did they ever come up with a parasailing at the beginning of the movie, and we're just, eh, we'll be okay, son. How do you get whatever, whatever attacked them on that boat? <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? You never found out. It just... Mm -hmm. 
Cloud. Oh, the boat's damaged. They, they, and have, blood. they have plesiosaurs in the ocean. Yeah, exactly. It was there. We never saw a dinosaur except the Spinosaurus in the river. Mm -hmm. But you think the Spinosaurus went out there into the ocean and then they came have, back? They have prehistoric what, fish what in the in the dinosaur ocean. is in the water? That didn't destroy the boat, just killed the crew on the boat. Jaws, man. It's it Jaws back for revenge! <laughs> it was a thin, thin line. Which also in Jurassic World yeah. has the jaw of the shark in there. Okay. Mm. Anyway. Um, That's what did it. Yeah, you can't do that <laughs> bad movie. <laughs> Stop having good, ref good movie references the, in your movie. He just poked his head over into the boat and go, nope, nope, nope. So and again, we have another over. ten minutes and then we're on the island. In mm -hmm. fact, this one even makes fun of it. Where he says, there's not a single thing on the history in this world that'll... Get me on that island. Yeah. And then it just takes a, I can write as many zeros here, Mr. Grant. And then, <laughs> next shot, we're in an airplane. You notice we're not even you know, bothered to talk about the plot. No, that, that <laughs> line, that line was actually Sam Neill improvised. There's not a single force on heaven and earth that will get me to do a Jurassic Park sequel. How many zeros do you want, Mr. Grant? <laughs> <laughs> now, that reminds me of the worst, or possibly nowadays, the best, could be the best part of the film. There's people that love it and they think it's the best part of that movie. It's up to you. It's your interpretation. Okay. We all saw this movie in theater back in the day. How, when did this come out? 2001. 2001. And we went to go see this. And we're all in the theater. We were with a lot of people. Yep. The whole row. All right. And cr imagine cr uh, Cranky <laughs> Critic over here. All right. The whole row is here. When this scene happens in the movie... <laughs> all of us at the same time all turned and looked at this guy and was like, what the fuck was that? What the hell was that? As if he made the movie. Okay. You know. okay. But tell them what the scene was. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, understandably, Spielberg took an executive producer role in this film. Joe Johnston came in. He needed money. He stated, I needed the money. Okay, fine. And we I, all know how well that goes. Yes. The directors need the money. When, for need when we saw the title sequence and the word Jurassic Park came onto the screen, yeah. and I just immediately knew that it was going to go... <laughs> <laughs> And I, I remember, I remember just listening to, to, the, to the reaction. I was like, oh. We <laughs> knew what we were getting into right off the bat. Mm -hmm. B-movie. Respected. Yes. B-movie. But that's still the not... budget B-movie. At the point, though, that's still the not, you know, what you call this world for we weren't prepared. Yeah. We still were not prepared for the scene he's about to describe. <laughs> you have to tell them. Which one? <laughs> Airplane. The, Alan. Alan. No. Yes. Yeah. So Grant is. Now I understand story. Wise. I understand story wise. The talk is the, the uh, Raptors are supposed to be able to communicate it, the, more than we've ever understood yeah. to the point where they actually would talk and be able to coordinate. They set that up and then yeah. the first one kind of touched it. This third one took it to an extra level. So of course he falls asleep. And he's in, wakes up in a dream, and the raptor's there, and Alan and talks to him. <laughs> yes, so... I understand where it is for the story-wise, but you shocked us with this yes. little scene of... Oh, a raptor yeah. sitting in the airplane chair with, with the little claws oh, on, the, on the chair in front of it, yes. Top-notch Sam Winston yes. animatronic raptor suddenly going, Alan. Yes, mm -hmm. and turns... Alan. And speaks English! And possibly the most off putting, just bizarre scene that you could imagine. That happened. Folks. And then just to turn around and go, dun 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 dun. That actually happened. <laughs> but some people now consider that the best part of the movie. Okay, now, anyway, now why do people not trash Jurassic Park 3 as much as The Lost World has over time? And, and Is I it because it's shorter? I, I think it, it's really because it knows it what it is. Them, it gave them what, it, what they wanted. There really isn't much of a story here. There is just action, and we're gonna throw them on the island. We, 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 we put we put uh, the production crew. I remember said something about we put people who weren't smart, like in part two where they were all hunters or mm -hmm. paleontologists and scientists, mm -hmm. and we again did what part one did, which was place normal, average, everyday nobodies mm -hmm. into this environment, which is where the audience connected to it more. Of course, everybody wanted Alan Grant to return back in the first place. Yeah. Now, again, we now no longer have a book to, for this film, mm -hmm. where 
this story was just taking elements from the first two movies that we had not done in the first two stories. Yeah, it, was, it was a cash cow. And we, we got the yeah. Tyrannodons, we got the cage, <laughs> we got all these different actions. We got a bigger dinosaur. Of course, you know, they again allude to what other, that wasn't on Engine's list of dinosaurs. Well, I'm like, imagine it, you know. So what you're saying, it, it is possible for three to be more watchable and more enjoyable than the second. I think, I think for today's world, you're hearing that more often, mm. only because it's not so heavy on beating you down with there's no, morals. There's no morality tale to it. In like there's Lost no World, hidden, yes. Not, not even hidden, but there's no side story of the, the, the scene uh, when they're rounding up the dinosaurs. They have that long panning shot of the cast as the as our hero yeah. cast is looking down and at the, the atrocities yeah. of... And you know, they're, they're bringing down the... The Parasaurophilus, I can't remember the name of the dinosaur. <laughs> the, 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 the one with the rim, the one with the rim, the horn. The horn has, yeah. And Elvis. That, yeah. <laughs> that was a deliberate, oh, look at how crappy man is. You know, that was obviously, and at the very end, you know, the, the speech with John Hammond. Oh, great speech. Yeah, with the music and yeah. all that, and they bring back the Jurassic Park theme and all that. Yeah, this movie is just straight up, let's get in, let's see our dinosaurs, Let's have some chases. Alan! Sorry. <laughs> and oh you God. have a villain dinosaur, and that's basically it. It's a scary dinosaur who's freaking out. We put the little cell phone joke into it, which was, I think, <laughs> brilliant. It was kind of so Which fun I for actually, in yeah. my first Nokia cell phone, I programmed that into my phone as a ringtone. Some of those redeeming qualities. Now, Barney? Yeah, let's skip that scene. But, <laughs> Damn on. it. Oh, no. But, um, you know, like, again, I think. You're right. It's something you can immediately throw in. I'm going to go see a dinosaur movie, and we're not getting anything else out of it. We're not getting a drawn-out finale where we we see the consequences of the story. Mm -hmm. We just got... It's actually a perfect precursor to what most action movies are now. Yeah. Which is why Mm. we love Mad Max Fury Road as much as we do. (laughs) It is not an easy watch. But Jurassic Park 3, it's very much boom, 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 fun, fun, fun. We got our we got our stuff. We're yay. We're happy. We spent our money. And Ninety we, minute movie, fun. and exactly. we're playing it fifteen times a day. With the exception and... of most action movies being nearly two and a half hours long these days. You got a point there. It, it's mm-hmm. actually kind of like the prototype of the modern. Get your butt in the seat. Okay, we had fun, and now we're out. If Michael Bay could take a page from that book <laughs> and keep in his damn movie. Ouch. Under freaking. Can we keep it under two hours? You know, for real. Can we keep it under two hours? Ah, come on, big budget. No, you don't, want to see, you don't want to see three and a half hours of Mark Wahlberg. Hey, Optimus, get over here. I apologize. Here. I apologize to my cousin because she's a Mark Wahlberg fan, but fuck. <laughs> sorry, I got. Oh. Sorry, I ain't gonna name names here, but she knows who she is, and I'm sorry. You know what, Mark Wahlberg? I'm gonna no. stop my the first Mark, Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg movie I've ever seen yeah. was Transformers. I've never ever watched a first Whoa. Mark Wahlberg film. Whoa. <laughs> We could get into a whole other discussion about yeah, it. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Anyway. But no, that's a good point you brought up. All right, so since we're, there's actually some positives here. I, I think there are some more positives. Um, wow. Don Davis brought in a score of his own. I think he was pushed and forced to jump the Jurassic Park theme down our throat. Yeah. But what he wrote originally mm-hmm. um, was good enough to add to the franchise feel. And I think it was his theme for the family, uh, mm-hmm. I think, was strong. Um the problem is, is when you were a diehard fan of Jurassic Park in the Lost World, you suddenly felt like this isn't the same. Mm. This isn't John Williams anymore. This has got hints of Spielberg in it, but it really isn't. And therefore, for those fans such as myself, where we were enjoying the sequels as this is this quality out there that we mm. always want to reach, we felt like we're hearing somebody else's music. That isn't quality. This is junk. Um, mm. But being able to take... 14 years since that film, and look at it again from another perspective of, okay, now what does this film have that Jurassic World is not going to have? Mm. And who is the, do we even know the composer? Uh, Michael Gucciano from oh, really? Star Trek. Oh, uh, the good, new, so good composer. So, uh, we have a shot. We have a shot. When, something. What, you think it was kind of weird with the, the Force Awakens, uh, Michael Gucciano, how do you say his name, uh, always does all the... Um, the Abrams. Uh, Abrams films. Yeah. But they're, John they're, Williams they're came in and got this one. Yeah. So yeah. what did John Williams give him? He gave him Jurassic Park. Right. Okay. And he did the music for the Lost World game on the PlayStation. That was him. So he's already played music 
in Wait, the, the old the old PlayStation. The one with the, the trailer that I adore. Yes, that, that was him. That was Gucciano. And it, and the soundtrack's available. That was him. And he's now doing this movie. So wow. there's Isn't some the Medal of Honor. There's some line. He's done a lot of games. Yeah, I think the, he did one of those. There's whole PlayStation. Movie. Now remember this this review's coming out before Jurassic World was released. So yes. we're we only know what the trailers have told us. So it's all speculation. But um, there are also elements of Jurassic Park three and the communication with the Raptors that is being built into this story. Oh, Chris Pratt. That's true. So, yes, we're trying mm. to get a standalone story with Jurassic World, Yeah, but it's rooting itself in the franchise, but it's not going to immediately say, well, Alan went to Site B again. It's not going to do that. It's right. going to try to bring some new people in, but we've got some hints and some people behind the camera and in front of the camera that are there. So, I, I'm looking forward to Lost uh, Jurassic World. Mm -hmm. That's really weird. All the all the movies have the word Jurassic and World in it. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> the, <That's true. laughs> so you know the Lost uh, it's Jurassic Park, the Lost World, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park Three, and Jurassic World. I mean, yeah. I, you can't cover the uh, original wow. name titles. Which even uh, Jurassic Park Three original title was Jurassic Park Extinction. Oh. They, oh, they, they originally that mm -hmm. was the original storyline, and when they changed the story. Mm -hmm. And last minute, they just wiped it and put three in. So it makes it seem a little more cheesy. Like, you didn't even try to put a real original name to yeah. this movie. Yeah. But, um, again, when you uh, move between three and four, Jurassic Park 4 had been tried before. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a story of, of the mutation and, and the mixture of human DNA with dinosaur DNA and making human Ooh, dinosaurs, yeah, which really like didn't sound great. Maybe they took a little bit of that for the, yeah, the movie, right, This movie, they still kept an element where they're going to be mixing dinosaurs together. Mm -hmm. And so there's elements that are there. I'm mm -hmm. really interested in the new director because I don't think he's really done much that's big. No. It's kind of one of those things that Spielberg kind of said, here you go, I like what you did. Mm -hmm. So again, we're what do you think of the CG though? I think it's gonna be heavy because yeah, they're like, what heavy. do you think of from the trailers so far? What they've shown? What do you what do you think of it? Because to I, be honest, uh, there's people out there just they're I'm blown away by the dress world I, I, when the big uh, thing came out of the water and ate the great white shark. It was like mind blowing, and I'm like, really? I, I don't find CG mind blowing when it's used like, to create... It looks okay. Things. Yeah. I mean, okay, Jurassic Park 3 yep. came out when? 2001. So it's been 13? Well, 14, 14, 13 years of production, 13, 14 years of release. 14 years since. So compare both films, it may look a little bit cleaner now, the CG, and, but... And, but and always, that's a big gap. Always people. in the world of, of, of gaps where you'll find technology is going to definitely increase. I expect better. But that's right. just it. To me, where did Jurassic Park 3 increase from Jurassic Park yeah. 1? Where was the increase there, and what did it do? They changed some colors of the dinosaurs that didn't look yeah. too great. There was one scene in, well, the Allosaur. Yeah, they got a lot more skin movement trying to do they that. They had very colorful. The Brachiosaurs in particular yeah. looked terrible. They had some rainbow colors. They were very thing. bright. They went with a, a, a different approach. They did. And I was not a huge fan of it. I think the Brachiosaur scene was very short and poorly done compared to what we were used to. But again, you look at the skin movements and the, and the technology and the CG that changed in just seven to eight years in the franchise. Right. Now you're going to do a 14-year jump. Mm -hmm. So we're going to... I think of it this way. If they were ever to make a Jaws reboot, mm -hmm. will people suddenly oh. love Jaws oh, Revenge? Oh, God. Well, no. Because no. why? <laughs> no, because why? No. Because the one thing that Jaws <laughs> Revenge did do is it still had a robot shark. <laughs> and growl. Okay, but see that's, that. But then it's gonna, it's going to become and set itself into this. This is the old franchise and the way they did it, and then there's this new franchise and does it a different but, way. But will this Jurassic Park do that separation? But, will suddenly Jurassic Park three be shoved into those with those films, and they were good in their own right? But this is a new it, set. Of it, it might do, but there there are so many people now that refuse to touch movies older than themselves, like the mm -hmm. younger crowd. Yeah. They'll never watch Jaws. Correct. They'll, they might not. Shame. Even, they might not even ever watch the original Star Wars trilogy because it's so old and it's nothing oh. but practical effects. Blasphemy. And we have so many people now that it looks fake. That CG original them, Robocop looks like crap. That, Look, it looks fake. I like new Robocop because it looks better. Nah. Because, That's today's generation, right there. Because today's generation, they view CG Man. as looking. Good. It looks bad. I don't know how because the the eyes. The I, eyes don't lie to I, you. I also think that in some ways it, it was more interesting when we were growing up to see villains that weren't necessarily realistically based. 
if it's a robot, it doesn't move like a real human, and therefore it made it more fearful. Like Terminator 1, right? Exactly. Where the, when you saw the practical robot, and you know, the robot... The T-800. Was, you know, you tell it looked all it creepy looked looking because it was stop, stop motion. motion. The stop motion it looked scene, weird. Yes, it looks a little jerky, but it was but creepy. creepy as hell. And it it's creepy. because of the impracticality of the effects of the time couldn't create realism. Now with computers, they're creating so much realism, it's like, well, I can connect to that because yeah. it looks real. But then again, I think it takes the fear element out away from it because it doesn't look like it's, well, that's alien, that's weird, yeah. that's unique. And Poltergeist I, had tons of CG in it and nobody was scared. Yeah. It, it ruined it's, everything. It's because it, it, there's no, the human element's being removed mm -hmm. for the eye candy and the yeah. eye candy looks so convincing, it's like, Sometimes. well. And I don't even find the majority of CG convincing anymore because it looks processed. It looks like somebody constructed this in a computer and it, to my eyes, because I grew up with practical effects and I, I grow up, I, I live around real things all the time. I, when you see a, a, a constructed, a computer constructed thing sitting in front of you, it just doesn't, I know the Transformer films is not the best model to go off of because they are alien. And some shots look good and some shots don't, but at the end of the day, when you have just this, like this cluster bomb of just CG everywhere, the the brain just my brain shuts off when it, I am surrounded by CG in a, in a in a scene or in a film in a lot of cases now, and it's like it just doesn't do anything. Every, you know, a lot of things are it could be a CG mess. A lot of movies now are CG. It's just a CG mess. It's a CG clusterfuck. Movies and the the best some of the best movies CG uh, enhances the practical effects. Okay. It, when there's practical effects now, I now supposedly there are practical effects. Yeah, I'm, in I'm, Jurassic World, we heard rumors. I don't, I didn't see any we'll of that in the trailer. Goes. But it, it's the Indiana Jones Crystal Skull thing. It, they're the practical effects of the original three, and then you got the fourth one that stands out. Well, when they did the practical effects, of the fourth one there really wasn't much. It's still yeah. all filled in with CG. Um, I would take Nightmare on Elm Street, for example, where you had the first one, the original, where you have no CGI, mm. but you take the, uh, the the bed scene where Freddy mm -hmm. comes through the wall, yeah. all on camera. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, that's cheap for nowadays, but the imagery it worked. worked with the lighting and the quality, where you take that same scene mm -hmm. in the new remake, mm -hmm. and you just try... talked about this. And it yeah. just... Okay, you just took all the scare and the exactly. fear away from it. Oh, it's a exactly. CG I know it's computer Freddy coming out of the wall. It's somebody's yeah. hand holding a computer image, and you can tell they're doing this, yeah. and they're trying to motion track it. Exactly. And you've just taken us out of real life. The best CG is when you don't notice it's CG. And when it's mixed with practical. And the biggest movie that I've always uh, appreciated with that was... Uh, what Lies Beneath with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm. You know, I've heard you rave about that for years. I, I I've, I've seen watched it. it maybe once or twice, but it's the behind the scenes that it really captured mm -hmm. you because they said, if Alfred Hitchcock had CGI, how would he mm -hmm. use it? Yeah. Well, you take it and the, well, CGI is just the floor. And they filmed it on a glass floor so the camera can go underneath the ground and all do all these weird things. Yeah. But the CGI is just the floor. Wow. Because that way the camera can give this an angle. But scene you, the but you, well, that was a scene in the, where he, he, he knocks her out and put, and yeah, exactly. And yeah. Uh, the, the fact is, is just being able to use what you wouldn't expect a CGI to be. Yeah. yeah. And therefore it gives you an angle that completely is all new. I know we're going way off talking to Jurassic Park 3, <laughs> but the reality is... Well, no, we're setting it up because 4 is right it, around it's, the It's a talk of CG and, and practical mm -hmm. mix. Mm -hmm. And will Jurassic Park 3 become that movie where now we enjoy it a little bit more because of what it did do in 2001 and where Paul Jurassic World will not do it a lot. If all. we're lucky, people, if we're lucky, Jurassic World will be entertaining. It may, I'm not, it may not be great, it's, it's but summer, if we're it's, lucky, it's, summer, so it's, it's a gonna, good, fun watch. It's going to be the lowest common denominator itself. I don't expect it to be great. But if it is, you'll you'll find out about it soon. All right, so Jurassic Park 3 rating. Out of five, out of five stars. stars, I will give it, if it was 2001, I would have given the movie 2. Mm -hmm. But today in 2015, I give the movie 3. Mm. Since you guys, both of you brought some more positive elements that I didn't realize, I'm going to have to up it, up it a little bit myself. What, what did you give it again? I gave it a 3 because... Okay. After 15 years, because I look back on it with more respect now than I did when it first came out. Three, yeah. three for me. Three out of five. Yeah, it's it's not. Ninja stars. Yeah, the, <laughs> it's not by any means the worst sequel I've ever seen. Yeah. And I've seen. I, it's I've, just not I've the first seen, one to pop in. I've seen all the Hellraiser <laughs> sequels. 
Just gonna say, <laughs> oh, I've God. I've seen the Hellraiser sequels. I have seen um, the Highlander sequels. Um, I've even watched... Little more discussions coming mm, soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even All right. Do. So yeah, three a three is it's a solid. Okay. It's if if you're if you're in the mood for just a mindless hour and a half dinosaur fest and you know that's what you're getting, no big deal. Well, maybe it's harmless. maybe well really would have elevated three even up to another notch if it had Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Alan, <laughs> all right, <laughs> Mark. All right, all right. So that's it for today. All right, we'll we'll see. Jurassic World comes out in two weeks. Yeah, I look forward to it. I will own it. And, uh, we will be seeing it together. Will. I'm, shocked. I'm shocked. I'm yeah. shocked that it's we, actually we, happening. We will be seeing this together. In 3D IMAX. <laughs> and you'll hear from us soon. Uh, review. All right, guys. See you next time.